So, you're a feminist now, and it's about to get problematic up in here. Holy shit! Holy shit! I'm a feminist now? Oh my god, this is so problematic! Oh my god! Oh no! no. God, that fucking theme song sucks so badly. What's up everyone, Lacey Green here. Last week I checked out the VMAs and well, it was definitely a new experience for me. I saw a lot of celebrities, AKA very problematic people. Pray, do tell us Lacey Green, why are these celebrities so problematic? Please, uh, tell us your brilliant and obviously fantastic opinion about how these people are problematic and how Somehow this affects me, who uh, who is now a feminist, and you, who's already a feminist, and stuff like that. Never mind. Come on, people. Let's just carry on. Miley Cyrus was wearing dreadlocks. Taylor Swift preaches a feminism that's far from intersectional. Seriously, Lacey, did you just say that Miley Cyrus has dreadlocks? Therefore, that is problematic. And seriously, say that Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift preaches a feminism that is not intersectional? Are you actually just said that? Did you just seriously attack another form of feminism? Jesus fucking Christ, I never thought I'd see the day. Holy shit, then that means, that means that the, the apocalypse is coming. women, bitches, and hoes. So does Miss Rocky, let's get high with Dr. Dre, but never mind, never mind. I mean, it's all about the evil black men that are saying bitches and hoes in this shit, motherfucker. What next? You're going to be complaining that he says nigger? What's a girl to do at the VMAs? Um, I don't know, watch it. Kind of get your reward if you've won it. Just suggesting. A lot of people in the anti-feminist camp tell me that they find the problematic analysis a big turnoff. Feminists and non-feminists alike have told me that they feel like they're not allowed to enjoy anything anymore. Yes, Lacey. There's a good reason for that. And that's because everything that we do is problematic. Every word we say, every thought we think, every thing that we eat, everything that we do, literally everything is problematic to people like you. Because you see through everything in an intersectional identity politics lens, therefore everything is offensive. Just being white can be offensive. Hell, one of these days, just being black is going to be offensive. You're coming around to it, I know it. We can't enjoy things anymore because you people keep telling us what to do and say, I don't like that. Therefore, you should like what I like, or that's not up to my taste, therefore I'm going to make it to my taste so that that's exactly what it should be, because equality, because diversity, because feminism. Okay, we need to talk about that. When feminists say something's problematic, they're usually referring to words, behaviors, ideas, tropes, stereotypes, and so forth that are factually inaccurate and ultimately harm women, people of color, the LGBT community, and so forth. Like I said, everything, everything is problematic to you. White people wearing dreadlocks. White people not being intersectionalist, women not being intersectionalist, feminists not being intersectionalist, black guys saying bitches and hoes because that's apparently problematic because ho ho, somebody just had their feelings hurt. All those things are not problematic. They can be problematic in context. Now, first, I have to get something out of the way here. White people have been wearing dreadlocks for thousands of years. I don't know if they wore it before black people, I don't know if they wore it at the same time. All I know is that the Spartans were around before the Rastafari. Just saying, the Spartans used to wear dreadlocks as a fashion statement and going into battle. That was before the Rastafari started wearing it. You know, I'm just saying, how's that problematic? And besides, your picture showed like she's probably curled her hair, not actually done dreadlocks. I mean... Am I culturally appropriating the pompadour today, which is an American kind of hairstyle? I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. I like it, though. Let me first say, the practice of talking about problematic shit is a crucial part of doing feminism. Oh, you just said shit. 
I'm triggered right now. So problematic. We have to identify harmful behaviors and words to actively discourage them. You can't do that because that hurts my feelings. You can't do this because that hurts somebody else's feelings. You can't do that because that's racist. You can't do that because it's homophobic. You can't do that because it's transphobic. You can't do this because it harms children. Jesus Christ, what can we do? What are these actions that are so horrible and problematic that we need to be discouraged from them? I mean... It can't just be some bullshit stuff like, I don't know, sp spreading in my legs naturally because I have balls. This promotes a more just and equal world, so keep your eyes open, baby, and have those conversations even when they're challenging and uncomfortable. That I find it funny that you're telling your triggered and problematic suffering audience to go out there and challenge people, no matter how unsavory and horrible their beliefs and actions may be because that is the exact opposite that you intersectionalists do. You, you actively create hug boxes and echo chambers to get away from all that shit. This is what you're promoting. You're promoting a style of politics and the way of doing things in the world that divides people and does not promote logic and reason. It instead promotes stupidity and dogmatic belief which isn't of the religious kind but you might as well just say that it is I mean come on and this actively hurts people not only phys physically which is very very rare I'm not saying that feminism and intersectionality causes physical harm unless of course you're at a uh, bar in Toronto where you happen to be attacked by certain feminists because of your views. I'm talking about Rouge. But regardless, regardless of that, regardless of that, I find it funny that you're telling them to go out there when you preach the exact opposite. Isn't that so problematic? That said, we are living in times of rapid communication. Hello, Internet. Oh, hi, Mark. On the web, I found that people are either queens or scum. We're either outraged or fangirling. We speak the language of 140 characters, a rebloggable picture or gif, a six second vine. There's no room for nuance or gray areas, but it's in the gray areas that our complexity as human beings lies. The truth is, literally everyone and everything is problematic. You see what I mean, people? Despite the fact we only have 140 characters, 6 second vines, all these things, you know, all these things, never mind the fact that Facebook has a, a bigger uh, word count and we can tweet longer, apparently there's hardly any room for grey areas and these grey areas are problematic and because of that, everyone and everything is now problematic. Well done Lacey, well done for proving my point. Thank you, thank you for telling us all that everything is problematic and that we all should take steps to improve ourselves otherwise Big Sister is going to be very angry and uh, spank us and tell us that we are horrible citizens and the gulag is waiting for us. The search for feminist perfection will cause burnout because there's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Yeah guys, you're gonna lose your parental rights, you're gonna lose your rights as a man, your rights to, you know, debate someone on the internet and not get uh, I don't know, arrested, or have your life ruined by a hate mob, I mean, you know, you're gonna lose all these things, tough shit, there's no gold at the end of this here rainbow, because feminism needs to attain perfection, and to do that, you have to suffer, you have to be the casualties for the greater good. The greater good. The greater good. All of us have been born into a culture that teaches us toxic behaviors and words that actively harm other people. Yeah, ban bossy, ban toxic masculinity, because feminism. So it should come as no surprise that amazing things in this world, books and movies, TV shows, music and people, are also flawed. They can be both at the same time. To improve, we need to encourage unlearning in our dialogue. Oh, holy shit, it's suddenly getting a lot Oh, welly in here, Jesus Christ. Oh, the air conditioning in here, it's really oppressive right now. I cannot believe you just said that, Lisey. Did you just say that we need to unlearn? We need to unlearn and basically 
drink the poison Kool-Aid because that's how we make a better society for everyone. That's how we make everything unproblematic. This is how we make things great. I can't believe you just considered that idea and thought that it was great. This is so authoritarian and totalitarian. I don't know where to look. look there is so much wrong. There's so much I could say about that one little sentence. See, it's ironic that you talk about problematic stuff in this, and you do make a problematic statement, but like you said, everything is flawed, everything is amazing, and everything can be flawed and amazing at once, because, hey, there's no pot of gold at the end of this here rainbow. We have to actively unlearn racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, and all manner of oppressions. And that is a lifelong process. So, all of us, all of us who are not feminists, or have just become feminists now, thanks to this video, are transphobic, homophobic, racist, and ableist, and we have to unlearn all this shit, even though we're not, most of us are not, we don't hold prejudice towards any of these people. I mean, it would be hypocritical of me to be ableist and racist, because I've got Asperger's and I'm mixed race, so that's crazy, but apparently I'm racist, so I must be racist to someone. I don't know, it could be white people and other mixed race people, I don't fucking know. I mean, we're not all the same, so... I'm struggling to think how I can unlearn shit that I don't feel. But that's the thing. Everything is racist and ableist and transphobic. And you've got to point it out. To quote Anita Sarkeesian, this is what she means. We have to unlearn all these things that they consider racist, ableist, blah, 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 blah. And, that, and basically conform to their social engineering. That's what we have to do. We have to drink the Kool-Aid. Uh, give in to their demands, think the way they want us to think, say what we they want us to say, and we will be good, decent drones for the s feminist utopia that is coming around the corner. In that process, we can absolutely digest media in a way that allows joy and entertainment of the overall person or media while rejecting its harmful aspects. <sighs> the hypodermic needle theory. Yet again, how many times do I have to say this stupid idea has been thoroughly debunked for decades now? Media does not harmfully affect people. It does not inject its ideas into people and say, this is how you should think. Move along now. No, people take in the information and process it in their brains and come with, up with their own conclusions. But for this to work, all media has to have an ulterior, secret, hidden, racist, ableist, transphobic, homophobic, anti-woman, sexist agenda behind it. This is sounding like Alex Jones with the mass murder pills. Mass suicide gender pills! This is incredibly like the, the conspiracy community and the religious people and all sorts of other crazy people who believe in this I don't know, to your pick, it could be revelations, you know, the, the apocalypse, the end of days, or uh, how the hell does jet fuel melt steel beams? Take your pick. This is theirs. This is their version. This is, you know, the patriarchy, isn't it? It's patriarchy that's injecting all this shit into our media, and we somehow have to uh, enjoy this media for what it is. I mean, it could be Joss Whedon, ultra-feminist, politically correct, a cinema, which, by the way, isn't necessarily a bad thing. He is a talented guy, as much as it pains me to say. But even that is problematic. But then again, they did, they did drive him off Twitter. He's no longer in their good books. But that's besides the point. Even when he was in their good books, all those films and TV shows are now problematic because they have nasty, nasty ideas in them. And if you're not careful, you may fall. Patriarchy's evil plan. <laughs> it's important to acknowledge problematic aspects and not make excuses for them, then initiate the discussion about what could and should change. Listen and believe. Enter this hug box and echo chamber, and we shall discuss amongst ourselves, dear feminists, 
how we can change the world. Let's forget all these MRAs and pickup artists and anti-feminists and neutral people. We don't need them. We don't need any of these guys. We'll, we'll do it for them. We'll have the discussion amongst ourselves. Then we will uh, take our plans to the world leaders and then we will change society. Who cares? We're their betters. We're their mothers and fathers. We know what's best for these people. That's exactly what she means by all of those statements right there. I try to do so in the spirit of encouraging learning and growth rather than judgment and shame, like a cheerleader. Ha! <laughs> Lacey Green is all about learning and the goodness of her heart without shaming anyone. Yeah, that's totally what you did with the amazing atheists all those years ago, hey Lacey? I think it's important to have positive spaces for people to make steps toward change. If they feel overly criticized, they tend to shut down. <laughs> we can't have criticism here because this will actually destroy our arguments. Is that what you're saying, Lacey? Is that what you're saying? We can't have criticism of intersectionalist ideas because if we did, they wouldn't hold up to scrutiny. Is that why you all go in inwards and, you know, you return to your hug boxes and your echo chambers crying? It's because your arguments don't have any weight? Is that it? So you have to shut down all criticism, all dissenting voices, just so that this grand feminist greater good, a greater good. can finally take sway. And who knows, maybe there will be some gold at the end of this rainbow. I've also found that it's important to create positive spaces for myself, which sometimes means zoning out and taking a break from feminist analysis. It would be absolutely fantastic if you never did feminist videos ever again, Lacey. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, I'm just saying that it would be fantastic because YouTube would have a lot less stupidity, but that would mean I would have no material. I would have nothing to do whenever you make a video because you would be saying things that I might say or saying other things and it just wouldn't be right. You see, that's why I want you around peddling your bullshit because it gives me ample material in which to dispute and ridicule it and basically, you know, tear it to shreds because if we don't have that, how do we progress as a society? You see, criticism helps people. It makes them better. It makes them wonder, okay, what did I get wrong? And then they'll fix it. You guys don't like criticism because if one person was to criticize one tiny little aspect of your philosophy and your ideology, it would crumble, crumble into dust like a corpse. It should never become an all-consuming shadow on life. That just ain't healthy. Just ain't healthy, babes. Just ain't healthy. Despite the fact that's what you've been arguing for throughout almost your entire YouTube career, your career on brainless, I mean, uh, browless, and in this video as well. It shouldn't be all-consuming on life. Well, sadly for us, it is all-consuming on our life because people like you keep forcing it on us. Okay, y'all, have we reached peak problematic yet? <laughs> I... <laughs> yes! You tell me. Let me know your thoughts down below, and until next time, stay brawless. Oh, it's over. Oh, God. The two minutes of hate is over. Oh. Stay brainless, really. That's what she should be saying. Oh, I made that joke twice. Oh, well, well look. Never have I seen such horrible, disgusting... Oh, God, Lacey Green has outdone herself. Have you noticed? Every time she peddles this kind of stuff, right? When I mean, she does videos like this. Tits hanging out, thighs nice and, you know, presented towards us. As if to say, hey guys, feminism. Looks good, doesn't it? Anyway, that's just uh, an off-topic thing that I thought I'd bring up at the end. So, anyway, this has been uh, Charming Man 93. Like and share the video, subscribe to my channel. And until next time, stay brain full!